Welcome back to the show guys. This is Connor from Out of Work. We got 47 controlling the Ultrax trolling motor right now. And that's what we're talking about. The Ultrax trolling motor, six months in. So you will be thinking about it. It is an older trolling motor by this by this time. I think it's about five years old now since it came out. This is the MSI model, which is the fairly new model or the latest model. Uh, 112 uh, pound feet of torque, 36 volts. Stay tuned, lots of information coming your way. Fishing on the back of the boat, which is the reason why you have this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Me and the boys fishing. You know. Talking fish, talking pew pews. It's a, it's a 30. I'm trying to catch something today. I haven't caught anything yet. I just got here playing with the uh, old tricks a little bit. We'll see. Hey, Nat. Nice one. He's good. Here we go. Yeah, that's what we're talking here we about. Go. Here we go. So the first thing we uh, want to talk about is why did we pick this trolling motor, right? Show the trolling motor right now. It's in operation right now. It's the iPilot Link. This is the top of the line model they have. We paid about thirty three, thirty four hundred bucks for it, shipping and uh, uh, taxes included. It is Emma. It is the MSI model for the ones that you don't know what that is. Let me show you for a second here. MSI basically means side imaging. So if you look at the transducer, the transducer has side imaging here and it's got your 2D traditional sonar here and your other MDI right there. This is the 52 inch model. That is how you stow and deploy it. Just demoed it for you. And uh, we do have it iPilot linked. And everything else, every other goodie you want on it, we got it there. So, in the past six months, we have been pretty much pretty happy with it. Uh, I don't know about anything bad that was part of this trolling motor. Um, we had the option of buying a Lorentz Ghost or a Garmin Force for $2,600. And we opted to buy this one, like I said, at $3,300. You want to give them one of your reasons why you chose this one over the other one? Uh, well, for, number one for me was it's it's uh, it's been out longer. It's proven. All right. And we have, then, we have a lot of uh, rumors about the other trolling motors okay. having just weird issues. And then number two was we were having very so right linking up is like another big deal, big plus for us. Yeah. So the one boat network is what he's talking about. And like I said, we're big fans of hummingbirds. We've been running hummingbirds ever since. We got into the fishing game. This is a Helix 10 uh, MSI as well. And we have the boat currently networked. So Humber here, Humber there. There's a second Humber on the other side that's currently not installed. Uh, GPS on everything. So it just felt like it was a good addition to the group. Um, on top of that, I feel like it's a proven trolling motor. Uh, the motors, the the props, everything, it basically was, in my opinion, it felt like it was borrowed from the, the Fortrex, which was the trolling motor before it. And I feel like those parts are proven. So going forward, they shouldn't have much issues. Uh, what I think they sh probably did have issues with was just, say, deploying of the sensor head, GPS, things like that. But I also feel that they were five years ahead of the game, so it's going to be a lot better on that end. The only thing that we kind of uh, had a, a little slight hesitation towards was this trolling motor is not a brushless trolling motor. It's still a yeah. traditional 36 volt electric motor where the other two were brushless. And if anybody knows the difference between a regular motor and a brushless motor, a brushless motor is one quieter, two takes a lot less power to give you the same amount of power power okay so more power more power is always better <laughs> uh 
and we we kind of waited for a little bit to, just to hear some rumors or not about uh, Minn Kota going brushless or not and there was no mention of it so when we bought the boat we said basically in three months if we don't have any news of Minn Kota going brushless we're gonna just buy the Minn Kota or if, if we did hear uh, news then we'll wait for the Minn Kota otherwise we're gonna buy it anyways at basically full price and that's basically what we did um, in terms of wiring it it is a little weird I mean I'll show you what I'm talking about we got two sets of wires coming out so this is the main trolling motor power and these two it's ethernet and uh, ultrasonic or sonar for some people um, installation is pretty simple we already had a, a trolling motor on it so we took it off and we just bolted it right down to the same holes yeah we, have yeah. we had a Minn Kota Maximus 20 I think it was a it's a maximum but the yeah it's a maximum the same. 24 volt and we have to be up to 36 and it basically bolts to the same exact hole so we're pretty we're pretty happy with that uh anything else you want to talk about oh yeah so spot locking features i don't hear people talking about this too too much spot lock right there that's the north button i, I hardly ever use any other buttons so i'm a bass fisherman and we don't really stay still too too much Hence why we don't use all the features. There is a controller too, because this is the iPilot Link version. And iPilot Link controller has a display, which uh, I don't use much that he does. It's pretty nice. Yeah, when we uh, we do a little bit of trolling. So once in a while we do troll for stripers and stuff and hybrids. And you can hang out in the back of the boat, yep. manually come and deploy it. And then you can hang out in the back of the boat, you can control it and it'll turn all directions. With the wireless controller. With the wireless controller. With the USB charging, which is pretty good. Um, 36 volts, 112 pounds of thrust. It can keep you in rivers, and that's what we're. That's the main reason why we bought it. Uh, we do a lot of river fishing, and kind of like right now. Kind of like right <laughs> now, we're in a river. It's not flowing super hard right now. They shut off the gates, but a lot of river fishing, and when we do river fishing, you need power. So when we went to the dealership, the dealership was like, for this boat, which is a, a basically a 20 foot aluminum. They're saying 70 pounds is more than enough to pull this boat around on the lake. And we told them, yes, that's true, on the lake. But we do river fishing. So anybody who knows river fishing, you have to fight the current. And not just fight the current, you actually have to go up current. So when you're in the river, going up current, you better have a lot of leftover power. Because if you don't, you might run into a situation where your trolling motor is at full power, but you're actually going backwards. So that's a, that's a big no-no. And for the 70 pound thrust maximum, we were on the lake and it was blowing about 25 and that trolling motor was going backwards on the lake. And that was not a problem with this one because uh, we tested out that one day, it was blowing almost 30. And with three guys on board, it was, it was running really, really, really good. So uh, that's, a, that's a big plus for us. Plus we're running a lithium battery on this thing too. So that's even more beast. Oh, you missed one? Okay. Um, well, what else we'll talk about? Uh, lithium versus regular. Uh, well, I was gonna talk about that just because uh, it's not part of the trolling motor. I mean, that's what powers it. You could run uh, lithium or the regular. Oh, right there. Yeah, we uh, we're running our our uh, trolling motor off of a 36 volt lithium battery, single battery that just gives you 36 volts output. And that lithium, it gives it all the power that this thing wants. So if you're considering buying one of these motors, and you have limited space in the battery box, that's something you should also consider yeah, too. Consider lithium. It's going to give you the best performance. Best performance. Yeah, we've we fished out of this for two days already without charging it, and the lithium hasn't given up yeah. on us yet. It's only a 60 amp hour, uh, 36 volt lithium, but it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty beast. It doesn't it just doesn't give up what it usually actually happens is our breaker will break before the battery gives up so that's a that's a big testament to uh i guess the motor uh we haven't broken it yet we did have one problem one time where i had these wires because you know like you run these wires you're not supposed to run it here so i ran it kind of just on the side and i did have an accident where this scissoring action as you go up and down it did cut the wires here but you know, just have to solder it back together, and we're good. So we gotta get back to the action. 
Hopefully that's a... <laughs> we'll continue hopefully we'll a continue a little bit. <laughs> Alright, recording. Okay, so that's the other thing, right? Spot lock, it gives you options. Okay, so we just caught a fish way down there. And traditionally, you'd have to man the trolling motor or drop an anchor or something. But now with the spot lock on it, the river's still flowing. But now I can like come to the back of the boat and fish this whole entire area. And you get it. That's why you buy a spot lock trolling motor. 